Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at question 1366, rank teams by votes. The way we'll be approaching this problem is by using <coughs> a 2D array to store all of the ranks that we see in all of the words that are given to us. And then once we have that, we sort that to make sure <coughs> it's arranged according to the words that they get and then return it. So let's divide this problem up into two parts. So basically let's do the tracking first. The first thing that we need to do is to create the 2D array, right? So let's call it uh, rank tracking, new int. So um, we know that the number of letters would be limited to 26, right? So we can have number of rows to be 26 and the number of columns would be limited to the number of letters that are in uh, every single word that's given to us. So let's say um, we get that from the first um, string length. All right. So basically, this is the 2D area that you need. We know that we are restricted by 26 letters since we're using only caps. Um, and the number of francs that we need to track will be limited to the number of letters that we're seeing. So it'll be N. Awesome. Once you have that set up, uh, let's actually start looking into um, tracking the ranks. So and I equals zero, I less than votes dot length and increment I. So this would iterate through all of the, the words and for int j equals zero, j less than n, we know that all the words would be of the same length. So <clears throat> it'll be less than n and then increment j. Um, right, so the next thing that we need is the character. So character C would be equal to uh, the given vote string that we're looking at. And um, yeah, J. So I think no, dot character at J. Awesome. <clears throat> and then once we have the character, we take, we store that. So C minus A. Um, of j plus plus. So what what's happening here? We are saying the rank tracking to the error that we have take the given letter that's given to us and increment the rank by one. So basically, um, j represents what rank it has, right? Since the position in which the letter occurs represents the rank, so we are saying, hey, this rank has occurred one more time, so we're incrementing it. And here you might get a li little confused. So C minus caps A letter. So every single character in the English alphabet is represented by an ASCII value. Um, it's spelled like this, A-S-C-I-I, -I, ASCII value. So which is, uh, it can be a, like a decimal value, a binary value, or a hexadecimal value. And every single character when it has, um, they have incremental value. So all the letters from A to Z have incremental values. So since we are actually starting off with zero and go all the way to 25, um, so which encompasses 26 letters, uh, and we don't want it to be out of range, that's the reason why we subtract the base value, which is minus, uh, which is A, caps A, which is lowest value that we can, value that we can get. And that's when we store it. Awesome. So if the first part of the problem is solved, which is like, track the ranks using the 2D array. The next part is the sorting. So the sorting is a little more convoluted. Reason being that there are three cases actually, like there are three ways of sorting it. When I say three um, ways is an, if you have just like one winner as an, okay, so letter A appears like 10 times and nothing else appears 10 times, we know that that is the value that it should get. But if there are two uh, letters that get the same value, you should take like the, f the ranking depends on how many times it was seen the second time or the third time. And so let's actually read this out. The ordering of teams is decided by who received the most position one votes. If two or more teams tie in the same position, we consider the second position to conflict. If they tie again, we continue the process until the ties are resolved. If two or more teams are still tied after considering all the positions, we rank them alphabetically. So basically your ranking has to go all the way through. So since it's a little uh, tedious to do this manually, we will use a comparator function, arrays.sort, and we will write our own comparator. 
<clears throat> but before we do that, we need to do a little bit of setup. So what is the setup that we need? So let's do, uh, let's create a character editor of temp a uh, new char vector of n for int i equals zero i less than n uh, i plus plus what we're doing is we are temp of i equals votes of zero dot character at i so basically what we're doing is that we're initializing a character array and we're assigning all of the letters that we see in a given vote to that array and basically we'll be sorting this array and the reason why i created a character like the full word character instead of a char char array is because to use a comparator function in the arrays.sort method you need um, objects and not really like primitive values. Ha using primitive values won't really work in the comparator value. That's the reason why we need to create a char um, array. And the char and uh, so it's char and um, character, right? The only difference is that char is a primitive type and this character is a, a wrapper around the char so you can create like act have more functions on that. So for example, you can compare them, you can check if it is a letter or not and things along those lines. Awesome. So we are sorting, we know that we have to sort the character, uh, the character array temp. And then let's say that we have two values that we need to compare. And how do we decide how to compare those values, right? So for int i uh, equals zero, i less than, uh, n increment i right so basically you're iterating through all of the the rankings that a particular character has so if a minus a here uh let me just write it out and then i will talk through it is not equal to b minus a of i then what we would done is r of t uh, b minus a of i minus r of t um, a minus a of i. If this doesn't work in the end, a minus b. So what exactly is happening here, right? So, uh, oh yeah, I need to give it a lambda function. Okay, cool. So what we're doing is that we're going through all of the, the ranks that are given to us and then we're comparing it. So for a given character, if the ranks are not the same, we basically just return the, um, the, the greatest value. So when you do b uh, b minus a of i, basically you're saying return the greatest value first. So you're you're using it to um, create a descending order rather than an ascending order. And if that doesn't work, right, um, you just return a minus b. So what you're doing here is basically saying that if the ranks haven't been resolved even till the end, you just need to rank them alphabetically. So if two uh, letters have the same value, you just need to return the in lexicographical order. So basically the letter that comes first. That's the reason why you need to, re need to return A minus B. Awesome. So this is a comparator function. Now, once we have that, we just need to return it. Um, so you can do this in multiple ways. We already have a char array and you could just copy that over to uh, like a char array itself and then convert that to a string and return it. So it will kind of look like this. Uh, so you create a char array and then let's say res of i equals temp of i. And in the end, 
return a new string and the value that you passed to it is just the char array. Awesome, so let's try compiling this and see if it's okay. The first few test cases are okay. Everything else is okay as well. Awesome, so let's talk about the space and the, the time complexity of the entire solution. So this time complexity of the entire solution is m into n. Uh, reason being, uh, you need to iterate through all of the words and all of the, the letters and that trumps, so actually it is uh, m into n plus 26 n log n. The reason why is because we are using um, a sorting algorithm here. Um, so that would be the time complexity of the entire solution and the space complexity of the entire solution is O of n. Reason being that even though it's a 2D array, since 26 is uh, a constant, um, we just take the O of n complexity for space complexity. Awesome. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. I would really, really appreciate that. Um, it definitely keeps me motivated to make more videos. Thanks so much. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.